Well, hello there. Welcome back to the Agassino Zynga Show, episode number 310. That's 310. Probably sure. Well, I'm pretty sure it's probably 310. But I'm going to call it 310 because that makes it a little bit more formal sounding. How are you doing? How are you feeling? Good. Amazing. I'm sure you're feeling great. I'm sure you're loving this time spending indoors away from your family and friends. I'm sure you're not going crazy at all. I'm sure you don't want to take a running head start towards an open window. Just hope for the best. I'm sure that's not happening right now. I'm sure every bit of money you've spent saving, you're going to then give to a good cause. Get your mum that car she wants. You're not going to go blow it on strippers and fucking coke when everything opens up. I know you're not going to do that. (laughs) But um, for everyone else that's on the edge, feel your pain. Um... Yeah, man. How's it going? Everything is um, as it was yesterday. Nothing has kind of changed since then, I feel, for most of the world. Unless you're in some parts of Mediterranean and maybe New Zealand, you probably feel a little bit more confident about the situation than maybe, you know, your fellow uh, citizens of the world. But regardless, it feels like we are slowly but surely heading for the light there is a light at the end of the tunnel for some people it's light at the end of the tunnel that comes with risk some people it's light in the tunnel that comes with no risk depends where you are or it depends how you view it right because i'm sure there's people out there who are just like you know what fuck it let's just roll the dice let's take the flip of a coin if i get it i get it i'm pretty sure some people would because you know sometimes you watch those apocalyptic movies and they're like oh when there's a big virus going around everyone stays in and hunkers down but in reality that doesn't really happen people would much rather have the option of deciding to go out and live their life as they choose because i remember thinking that was true when i watched this documentary i think it might have been about chernobyl when the whole chernobyl series on hbo if you haven't watched that definitely check that i'm sure most people have watched chernobyl right i'm pretty sure it's not think it's a, it's not a new thing um but Chernobyl was actually a, a real thing, right? So, if you if you uh, do a little Google, you'll find it might be a HBO directed documentary. I'm not too sure, but I remember a scene in one of the documentaries where essentially it plays out like the series, where there's a scene where they go and interview some of the people who stay behind, who never moved, right, when the nuclear reactor exploded, and they interview some of these old ladies who lived there, and they were very matter of fact about the, you know. They had to, I'm assuming, suffer through the Serbian war, right? Loads of civil war happened in that region back in the day. Um, maybe some Soviet rule stuff. I'm not sure um, if I fail my uh, mid, middle, middle Europe um, history, but they had to go through quite a lot when they were younger. So their rationale was that this nuclear reactor blowing up isn't going to make them up sticks and move again because, you know, they don't have the means and they're not physically able to. So if they have to die, then it is what it is, but they'd rather die on their own land that they've kind of fought so hard to, like, have. And it was obviously shocking to hear someone say that, like, you know, I'm not leaving. But it was also quite um, kind of refreshing to know that that kind of ideal... Uh, sort of like selfless not self, selfless, I don't know, whatever that is that kind of uh, picturesque sort of idea that we have in movies of how people react to disasters isn't actually true, right? Because in movies sometimes well, you, there's always that one person that's the cynic, there's always a, there's always a couple of people in the movies who are like self-centered and only looking after themselves, right? But the reality is that most people are thinking like that most people are malevolent in that regard, right? Most people have like ulterior motives, you see the whole thing that's happening with Chris Cuomo at the moment about you know whether or not he's lied about you know having corona he's in lockdown in his basement um you're seeing people you know like the neil ferguson dude had headed now and go meet his uh booty call or bringing his booty call over to his house and fully aware that he's got the corona as well there's all these really strange things popping up and they're more they're more common than they are rare so it leads you to believe that you know human nature isn't necessarily what we see in movies it's not necessarily what our friends tell us into our face human nature when the chips are down is malevolent as fuck, selfish, and just, you know, um, reckless in some way, shape, or form, innit? Maybe reckless is not the right word, but have you ever went on, have you ever gone on, like, um, the WTF subreddit, or even some of the public freakout stuff, and you've seen how people, you know, interact with the world around them, and how reckless some people are with their lives, and the, you know, the kind of reckless abandon they go about things and the fact that they have no shame, right? They could be just shouting at some poor innocent girl working at a Starbucks or a guy working at McDonald's with all these camera phones out and not give a damn, not even try and dial it back in or dial it down, sorry. They just go on and on, you know, acting a fool, you know, embarrassing themselves and their family and friends. And then you realize, okay, people like that just don't, you know, they have no, 
they have no regard for anything apart from that moment in time that they're living in it's just then then and now i feel wrong i'm gonna go and shower you so maybe some of these people who are a little bit you know reckless with this whole virus thing are just like you know what i don't care i've had a good run we're all gonna die anyway that's the only certainties we have in it right death right so we all know that's coming in some way shape or forms so they would rather do, have to die standing up i guess the term is which is an interesting point of view but i just you know I think the more that I've read about stuff in history, the more sympathy I have with people and how they react because I just think it's ingrained in us as part of our human nature, something that a lot of people don't want to recognize. But some people are just going to react differently from things. And I just think it's folly for you know the stay-at-home crew and the telltales to be going around pointing at people who aren't doing exactly as you are doing. And as well, the pointing and tattletaling, what is it serving? Who is it serving? Are you trying to you know bring them on your side or you're just trying to uh make yourself look better by pointing out the 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 shortcomings of others and usually people like that always have the biggest closets in their room in it they usually always are hiding the most things so it's been funny to see how all this stuff is unraveling and shit and you know some of the stuff people are getting angry about when it comes to you know celebrities filming in their big houses and massive kitchens and saying that we're all going through this together like what do you expect them to say you know they're going through this thing with us like they're humans as you are right some of them might have got lucky some of them might have worked hard it doesn't really matter and also what did you expect did you think this person that you watch on netflix lives in a, in a you know in a one-bedroom apartment somewhere in some rundown town of course she's not or he right they're obviously going to use that money they get paid you know to live in a comfortable setting somewhere right with high ceilings and uh marble work services should be expected i don't know why people are getting angry at this kind of thing this is really interesting it's like you follow these people you kind of give them your attention which then leads to them getting an increase in the money they're paid because you know you're paid relative to the amount of eyeballs and bums on seats you can put in and place whatever and then when they display um the rewards or the fruits of all this attention again people get angry like oh my god we're not going through this together we're not going through it you guys over there it's like such a waste of energy it really is it's just like come on of all the things to be worrying about you're pointing out that rich people are rich it's like i didn't know that i mean it's like i don't know it like and and if maybe it's just me too um it's like when you see a big bum on instagram do you get do you whack off and stuff i don't you just get conditioned to seeing stuff in it like I'd assume I, I don't know you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna speak to a 13 year old boy about seeing you know naked women's bodies but I'd assume if you put a 13 year old from like the 90s and a 13 year old from now and you know showed them a picture of a woman stark naked they'd have very different reactions right because one is being conditioned to see now you know in music videos and YouTube videos all his life or for the majority of his kind of life where he was aware of the opposite sex that he was into and then you show someone the kid from the 90s who maybe you know doesn't have that much access to or maybe the 80s they say right but mostly you know those late night cable shows or the odd magazine here or there i don't know if that era probably is internet but it was not the same right they're definitely going to be shocked in a different way and oh my god fucking hell but nowadays i don't know man we see you've you know we've all got instagram accounts we've all got social media accounts you see these guys going into their houses with their kids with their friends blah 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 like you shouldn't be that surprised that people live well you know people live a lavish rich lifestyle it should just be normal it shouldn't really trigger you that much i don't think so personally um you know mtv cribs back in the day was interesting because you never got to saw people's cribs because there wasn't a way to see it right mtv cribs now there's to be quite boring because you know all kim's got to do is turn on instagram and you know she's effectively you know done mtv cribs without having all the annoying ads and having to deal with producers and executives and shit so I don't know but what do i know anyway that's the intro ran over um hope you guys are well hope you guys are doing good as per usual if it's your first time listening to the show uh please make sure you smash that like button hit subscribe leave me a comment down below if you're listening via the podcast app of course a five star review will help it go a long way and share it with all your family and friends that'd be nice maybe not family maybe just friends keep it there don't want to get in trouble with anyone's mum and shit you know what i mean got my own things to worry about but um in updates on what i'll get up to um i've been running a lot at the moment so that's been pretty good i'm gonna do a little review of the new shoes i've got i picked up these uh ring these uh hoka ho, hoka ring cons that have really been serving me well i've so far done about what 15 miles or so in them 
um I only got them a couple of weeks ago and yeah I'm so gutted I didn't jump on the maximalist or kind of you know cushion shoulders shoes quicker um I tended to put I, I, I favored more of the minimalist shoe that came from my uh training uh that came from my experience doing the crossfit endurance training program that basically specified less sort of like mileage week on week because most running plans if you're doing a couch to 5k they sort of incrementally rise the amount of mileage that you do per week right until you get to a point where you can consistently run for a long period of time and also you can run at that pace you could also run in intervals whatever but the standard sort yeah so but that's a standard model and the crossfit endurance model kind of advocates for shorter distances so you you rarely if ever do your full uh max effort race kind of time whatever or distance you always do like you know first of 5k you do like those of 400 meters you do loads of you do two mile repeats really quickly so you can build that anaerobic or yeah, anaerobic kind of endurance uh it focuses on technique a lot making sure you lift your foot so it slaps your bum. I should show a little video of it here so I can see it. But it's uh, I'll put it in the background. I've been talking about it, but the idea behind it is really sound. But it it kind of really advocates for wearing minimalist shoes. So that means a zero drop shoe, which basically you know it's in the name. You want to make sure there's no sort of like uh, exaggerated heel or anything that's going to. Let me see if I can find it. That's going to hamper your way of running. So, CrossFit Endurance, where is it? Yeah, this is the one. So, this one is from, this is the original one from Brian McKenzie, who used to be part of CrossFit, when I used to do his own thing with. He's got loads of breathing workshops you should check out, but this video kind of got me started on all this kind of stuff. Whoops. Boom, he's tight. But one of, the, but one of the, the, the primary problems that we see coming out of our seminars um, are calf issues or foot ankle issues. We'll just call it ankle issues because it's everything that revolves around that ankle. Okay, so ankle flexion becomes a serious issue and people misunderstand a lot of what we're teaching with mechanics when we want to land that foot, that heel should actually kiss the ground. So as Doug comes, as he comes out of this pulled position, his foot will land and his heel just kisses the ground yeah. and this elastic so that's essentially the kind of practice that you, you need to do then it goes from you know skipping on your toes to make sure you get that same motion running drills blah 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 so with that sort of technique it kind of calls for having a minimalist shoe nothing too big or chunky to kind of get you out of that stride pattern so i kind of put off the maximalist shoe but there is a place in your wardrobe i'm now speaking to the choir here to have a shoe that you're able to run in that's also you know to have a shoe that you can run long distances in without you know your foot getting fucked up because sometimes running a long distance maintaining that kind of form um it's very difficult not a lot of people can do it that's usually a, reserved for like the elites of the elites right so i had to get into a place where i was able to kind of run regularly you know with a because i'm a bigger dude as well making sure i've got something that i can actually um take me and then you need to be able to do that on a you know routine like on a for a longer period of time and then when it comes to doing the shorter runs i'll then switch to finish shoe but i think usually i kind of just you know i just didn't really take it seriously having the good shoes i just thought i could run and run and run and the things i had you know make do and of course like in all things you know if you get better equipment things just go a bit better especially if you've been using shit stuff so that's probably why i'm a bit thankful that i was wearing shitty trainers so that i think they helped me go and i got these new hooker ring cons which i'm going to review actually tomorrow i'll do a proper review about what i think of them but so far so good man really really handy um something to have in my running rotation of course i'm going to have a you know a much thinner lighter shoe for my race days but for just week week on week training something i can use that can give me a little bit of a give in when my feet are feeling a little bit tight even after i've kind of rolled them out it's good to have those ring cons so definitely if you haven't checked those out before i recommend you get the, get a pair for yourself so it's like um it's this one hook a ring con right yep let me see if i can find it there we go so this is the shoe hook a ring con right boom it's got like a nice heel tab on i've got the black and yellow ones here so definitely i'll make a review for you guys watching um i think i bought mine from sports shoes they were like 80 quid i'm gonna say they might be the cheapest of the um hooker lineups 
I'm assuming because it's kind of the all rounder shoe that they have, but I recommend them, and they're really, really good. Anyway, let's move on to some topics that I thought would be of interest, and then I can leave you guys to go on your merry way. So, what have I found on the internet this week that I thought was of interest? Number one, there's this intro. What is this? I don't even know why I tagged it properly with. I've got an intro video here that I went to intro with, but I ended up ranting for a few minutes, so please forgive that. Let's see what this tweet throws up for me before I read it out to you. This is, oh, the Tyler Perry quote. This is an interesting one, I guess in general, because I think it's a scripted show. So this guy, is it Kenya or something? He's got a show on Netflix now called Black as F, or Black as Fuck is meant to be, or Black as F, right? And he's having a, I'm assuming a scripted conversation with Tyler Perry who kind of expounds on why black creatives, especially in Hollywood or in most, you know, in most societies need to, uh, or even just created from like a non-majority population need to concentrate on serving their demographic as opposed to getting the praise and the permission and adulation from people outside of it. And it's a common, it's a common adage that sometimes fall, gets fallen on deaf ears, I think mostly because it's just so difficult when you come up in an industry where you're having to please the quote unquote white man i think it can be hard to break out of that mode of thinking um especially when there's not many people around you who are in who look like you are in powerful positions to make changes or to make decisions decision makers right there's not many of them so you sometimes can get to a point where you start to um, what you call it you start to try to please the audience or try to please your supervisors or advisors but i slowly actually think it's maybe a it's maybe a consequence of the social media age that it's weirdly enough enabled um empower empowered everybody no matter your race or where you're from to basically go for what they want to go for without having to succumb to the trap of going to auditions uh trying to sell scripts and stuff you can just do your thing with yourself right you can get your friends to do a little skit with you you can start your you know podcast up like i have or record a music record some song or whatever maybe on an album put a mix together you can just do it all from the comfort of your own bedroom you don't need to go to some sort of a higher up power to get it done but i think this sort of message does need to be said for people who are maybe just past that stage where you kind of gain some traction but you need to make the next logical jump and you think you've exhausted all your own options so you want someone to kind of give you money or access to their contact list so you can get it to the next level but if you just keep playing to your audience kind of going back to the 100 true fans or 1000 true fans you'll eventually win in the long run it's a longer slog it's not something that you know it's not the one million dollar advance that rappers get nowadays and they get signed to a 360 deal it's not that kind of deal you're not going to get money up front a lot of it you're going to have to spend out of pocket you know like i've for instance i've invested on in a new cat in a new microphone actually an audio interface to kind of take this next level you know keep them at the camera now but that's kind of coming out of pocket um but you're gonna have to do that for just to, just for your own sake because you want to present the best possible product for your customers or people that are watching your stuff and then in the end if it changes and you suddenly pop and someone wants to come invest in you you have this whole bevy of a backlog of uh content or basically you have, you have all these different reference points that you can kind of harken back to and say hey look at what i've done from this point to this point where i've kind of like in my trajectory how many people i've gained along the way and then you can be in a much better place to negotiate as we're going to speak about later negotiation really um relies quite heavily on what you know you can basically demonstrate um and you can make yourself kind of what's that word what's a book i had um make yourself uh not indispensable right that's what you want to be but let's quickly play this one so you can hear what they're talking about that's from over there yeah, yeah i kind of do R really oh, you look around the room really yeah the motherfucking chip 35 dollars a bag what yes what kind of potatoes damn 35 dollars i need to go to idaho and find that fucking potato well i kind of already just just it. go ahead King. What, what what's going on there tell me i mean i feel like you have figured out the beat of your own drum and that's what you dance to and it works for you you don't seem like you care i don't i don't know how to do it man i feel like i really care what white people think i feel like i like a lot i care what everybody thinks and to be honest with you i feel like that's almost all i care about it seems like what other people think it's really sad it's a sad <laughs> existence it's not, a, it's not a great life but I, it seems like every time i do a project the first thing i do after the project comes out is go to rotten tomatoes let me just tell you about the tomato. 
I don't fuck with them. You don't, don't fuck with tomatoes? I don't give a damn about a rotten or a fresh. None of that means shit to me. I, that's, a, that's amazing. What about the critics? I don't give a fuck. I guess that's amazing. Can I just tell you why? Let me tell you Please. Why. It, because, listen, man. I know that I'm telling stories that my folks want to see. And I'm talking from our point of view. We're speaking a language. We're speaking a shorthand that we get. That white people don't necessarily get. Nina Simone said this, and I never forgot it. She said, you will use up everything you've got trying to give everybody what they want. You got to focus, man. And you know what I do? I super serve my niche. We speak a language. We're talking. We know each other. We get it. I, I, there's a lot of times I see shit that win Oscars. I be like, what is this shit? I walked out halfway through it. I don't get it. But, and, I, and listen, I feel like they feel the same way about my work. They don't get it, which is all cool. My mother. And I think that might be one of his um, superpowers. I think I've noticed that in quite a lot of successful people, especially in media. Um, you get it a lot with comedians, especially the good, the best ones, right? The best comedians are usually unroastable because every negative aspect of their personality or their lifestyle, they've, ex they've essentially been able to exploit it for their own monetary gain. And usually in comedy, the more honest you are, especially nowadays, the better it is for you in your career because you connect with more people because they see how honest and vulnerable you are. I think part of the reason why Lucy K was able to bounce back so quickly after his whole kerfuffle was that he's been, you know, he's on stage, he's presented this sleazy, pervert sort of dude for the majority of his career, maybe since the beginning. I haven't watched maybe many of his old things, but I've been familiar with Louis for a few years, and I know that he's presented that image. It wasn't a surprise when you heard that, you know. If you know anything about Louis' material, you know how dark it can get. So for somebody who has that kind of mind, who thinks in that kind of way, it's only natural that he's not going to be like, you know, white picket fence, you know, wife, you know, dog and two kids. It's not going to be likely. He's going to be a little bit wild, a little bit reckless. So I think the reason why he's able to bounce back so quickly is because people recognize that and they were allowed and they kind of were kind of willing to give him a chance, willing to give, give him benefit of doubt. Similar to what you do with your friends, right? Usually some of the, friend, the things your friends do, you sh you're not that surprised usually, right? Because you know them and you're able to forgive them because you, the things that they give you positive far away the negatives and i think the greatest entertainers usually people in media have a weird understanding of knowing exactly where they fit in and just going for it you know how some people on youtube like do that thing where it says a current topic going on they just jump on it and just start talking about it just to kind of bounce upon the views i feel like the top top echelon people don't do that unless it's something directly um, within their like you know purview you not know, something that's directly within their lane they just tend to just ignore everything and just focus on what they're doing and again it's not easy because i'm sure someone like tyler perry would want the adulation and the acknowledgement of his peers but what would you rather would you rather be able to feel buns and seats again which is very difficult to be able to go watch movies see your kind of broadway show whatever he's doing those are real actual people right they're not these are not numbers on the streaming site which are kind of you know um hard to quantify these are people actually physically going to buy a ticket what do you rather make sure they like you or they love what you do or please a group of critics who you know if the publishing company goes under they're out of the job and then a new person comes in and they don't like you and it's a whole different thing or just in general most critics you know don't really go into watching things with the hope of liking it they go into it hoping to find something that they can kind of critique or find an angle find a hot take that you can kind of take away from it. especially nowadays with people on twitter being a blue check mark if they you know write a couple reviews on the blog site so i can definitely see that but again it's difficult to do especially nowadays because everyone wants instant gratification and you know people feel shy about starting things but i think it was really fair um what you call it advice from Tyler Perry but again I'm not going to play the whole thing it's a bit it's not it's only two minutes but you know it's two minutes that I can save so I recommend you check out yourself but I'll put a link in the show notes for you guys to see it what else is on here that I wanted to talk about oh Adele lost a bunch of weight and the internet is going mad in case you're wondering I'm not drinking a bit of Buffalo Trace today so keeping it nice and loose so Adele would do this I think it's been it's been rumoured a few for maybe a few months now I think maybe ever since we saw images of her I'm not sure where she was it might have been like a after party somewhere for, for the Grammys or something it might have been a Grammy after party I remember it was one of those kind of black and white photo booths they always do in LA you know was, I don't know how much it is to hire that booth but wherever that booth is um, everyone seems to love it in America but that kind of booth that gives you the sort of like you know 
black and white style uh, film pictures that I'm not sure if they get sent by email or they get sent physical, whatever. She, the member she took a picture of somebody in a photo booth and the internet was ablaze. The internet was on fire because everyone was like, oh my God, she's so skinny. Because the first thing, I mean, you know, even for myself, I know, having weighed 260 pounds and I'm like, what, two something, 220 something, trying to get down to under 200 before this whole thing is over. But even I remember when I was dropping down weight, the first thing you notice, especially when you're a bigger du bigger person, is that the first things that you, yeah, sort of evident things are the weight loss in your face and usually your neck starts to look and you can see some bits of your collarbone, whatever they may be, right? And if you're used to your body and your face looking a certain way, it can be, or if other people are used to it, it can be a really big shock, like, whoa, I didn't know you had that actual neck. I didn't know you had an actual, you actually had those cheekbones. Even if you've got a really round face, you can still develop some form of bone. Sh you can still, you can still, uh, be able to like people can still be able to see your bone structure and um, if you lose a bit of fat or excess fat in that case right if you're a bit obese so i think when people saw the pictures they're like oh shit she's definitely lost some weight and a few other pictures came out but there was no official announcement and i think it was clever of her team not to really address it because you know she is one of the few i don't know what do you what do you call them superstars right in that respect there's a tier like the jay-z rihanna beyonce kind of tier drake maybe is in that conversation then kanye where you know they drop something it doesn't matter if it's just her just farting on her toilet seat and it'll sell you know close to two hundred thousand copies of the album first week she's in that kind of upper echelon and people like that they just move a different way they don't do much press if they do it's always very you know uh it's always very planned planned out there's no kind of spur the moment things they don't really let their guard down in public things only come out about them from second third fourth fifth hand sources uh, they never really direct. They never really directly uh, address any drama or gossip, unless it's something they really have to kind of speak about. They just always everything is dealt with behind closed doors. You hardly see them in places. It's a different way they move. So I understood about them not wanting to say anything. And in general, there's this weird kind of movement online, which I'm not really a fan of. I'm a fan of the first bit. The first bit online, especially the whole kind of fat acceptance quote unquote whatever that term is nowadays i think there's some good in it right there's some good in the fact that there are people out there who you know through no fault of their own or because they just wanted to as a lifestyle choice they decided that they want to be they don't want to lose any weight they don't want to look skinny they don't look slim they don't see any appeal in it they are they are really happy really um, content with just the way with being big and just the way they are right they don't really see me as a bad thing if people call them fat they don't cry or complain it is what it is they're trying to they're trying to uh, influence the world to get to a place where people don't uh, vilify them for being a certain size which is fine all, all power to you it's going to be a difficult you know undertaking it's probably something that isn't going to be possible within our lifetime but i'm all for that i think that's a good thing going forward especially with social media around i think the fact that people share so much about themselves online it'll be nice if we live in the if we live in a world where people just weren't mean for the sake of it because you happen to be a bit big right people just kind of were able to judge you on the strength of your character not by the way you look in the mirror or the way you look in your fucking camera phone it's a bit unfair but then the thing that i don't like about the fact except the movement is the fact that any time it's a standard thing that happens it's it's more justified maybe in a vegan community right when a vegan youtuber gets called out for eating meat and shit people go crazy but it seems like um that's you know that's completely justified especially when you understand that veganism is a whole different subculture it's not just the dietary choice right there's other lifestyle aspects that comes attached with it so you know eating meat when you're the case of being a vegan is in the way kind of spitting in those vegans faces but the fat loss thing is strange because if you're in the fat acceptance movement and you're one of the leading voices and you end up losing a bit of weight they really vilify you because instantly when you lose a bit of weight you feel quite proud and especially if you've been that size for the majority of your life it's a real big accomplishment to somehow go from even if it's 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 accomplishment either way even if you go from skinny to fat or fat to skinny it's an accomplishment that sounded somehow over a period of time you were able to like change the physical makeup of your body it's just something you're always going to be more over that no one's ever going to get tired of before after pictures right there's something just wow that's sick isn't it how you can just go from like you know one one way to another way so when someone posts it and it's not even a thing of like saying oh some people are not even writing a caption where you know i was unhappy fat now i'm really happy they're not even doing that they're just sharing what their journey like i decided to get fit it's just a decision they always get vilified by the fat community they were once a part of because they see it as a weird i guess a dog whistle 
that they somehow need to change their lifestyle it brings what's that thing called what's that word called expect unfair expectation maybe that's the term they use right um it's not maybe a good what's that word called uh, it's not maybe a good image or something message for young kids coming up and looking at him thinking that in order to be accepted you have to be skinny all these really batshit crazy ways and you saw it happening with Adele and, it, and they think the good thing is that you know this sort of like um work backlash doesn't really care about who it who it goes for anyone can get it uh, because of course the agenda is more important than you know people's feelings but i just think it's really kind of shitty because again she didn't say anything about it she just kept her counsel lost her way just kept to move on but people are now kind of like fighting each other online about what's right what's wrong and there's no right or wrong answer behind it if she feels like she's hotter now and she wants to be i don't know she wants to get a breakup body because i think she broke up with a long-term husband and had to allegedly pay him you know nearly 150 million in a divorce settlement whatever maybe if that's true or not whatever but people when they break up tend to go a bit you know let me show this guy what he's missing out on and get all hot and cute looking it's not surprised that she was on to the same thing too so should we just leave her alone let her get on her life or should we uh, use her as an opportunity to kind of like you know start pointing things at each other i'm not too sure but these are these are the tweets that kind of spurned this whole story so uh, I saved a couple of the responses online that I thought were of interest. So this is one person says, um, "Never mind Adele's weight loss. Her achievements so far are mad." Capital and capital oh, lost is at one hundred twenty million. Sell record sell fifteen Grammys, eighteen Billboard Awards, five AMAs. Uh, it's the rest of what she's done, right? So I guess this person is trying to say, yeah, her achievements should far outweigh her weight loss, which is true. We all know she's amazing. But you know, objectively, there's no way you can not look at her now because you know I don't think I think everyone would. Uh, agree that Adele was a pretty girl regardless beforehand even when she was a bit bigger but objectively there's no there's no harm in even if you're a bigger person looking at that picture and saying that she looks incredible she looks I wouldn't say better but she looks um, by conventional beauty standards she looks far more attractive then than she did when she was bigger by conventional beauty standards now if the beauty standards over a period of time change due to these fact acceptance movement people you know fighting a good fight so be it but as we are now in this moment 2020 people still tend to favor somebody that looks i don't know quote unquote uh the has the what's that word called when your size matches when your weight matches up with your height right because that's how they judge if you're morbidly obese so if she's in range with what she should be in terms of her height and her build that's okay for people to find that attractive i don't think it's a bad thing and it's not necessarily she's kind of disowning the facts of this movie because she's still one of you guys. She probably still has a lot more. Because people like this will be, because that's the thing I've realized too. On social, especially when it comes to girls, it's definitely a, a woman thing that I will never understand. Of course, I'm not a woman. But there tends to be a lot of models, influencers, or girls that are like really attractive, you know, from birth sort of thing, you know, just got the luck of the gene pool. Or girls that are just naturally slim and skinny. There's a lot of these girls who happen to have really big followings online, especially if they're fitness influencers. I never understood why, because a majority of their of their viewers or fans aren't that you know in great are in great shape, you know, by all sense of the word. But they tend to have a lot of those girls as fans who aren't necessarily skinny themselves, and then the influencer themselves uses their platform as a way to preach to those girls and tell them, hey. Uh, you know, this is a lifestyle I'm promoting. I just eat this carrot juice in the morning, and I feel super full. There's no way that they can relate to each other because this person that you're following, that they've never been in your position. They've never been bigger. They've never had to suffer, you know, in in a, in bad situations in front of their family members. They've never had to suffer being picked on in school, right, or being left out of certain things because of the way the way you look. They've never had gone through any life experience you've gone through at all. And on top of that, they're you know multi-millionaires, so there's a definitely a, a gap there, but I don't know why some girls tend to like following people. I'm not sure if it's a weird, morbid sort of like self-hate thing. If it's something that you just want to aim towards, I don't know. But it's just interesting. If you, if you just trust me, whenever you see a, a fitness influence online, go through some of their followers and look at the girls that are following them who are kind of really active on their page. They generally don't tend to look like the influence that they're following. Um, it's just interesting. It's sort of like following a footballer and not giving a shit about football. It's like, hmm. But regardless, um. So here's some of the negative ones about the reaction towards it, which I thought of interest. Let's get some of these up here and see what people are saying. The backlash should be expected. I think that's why her team kind of was radio silent about everything. But I don't know. Some of it's just really weird. Um, this is just let's see. There's three here so far. Let me just get a couple of these up to see what you guys think of it. 
So, first negative kind of spin reaction on it says the following. And that was the same person she was. Not a better person, not a more acceptable person. The same. The growth is on the inside. She's strong, brilliant, and talented. But that's obvious, right? There's no need to say that unless you just want a virtual signal. That's completely obvious. We know she's amazing. We know she's talented. Um, largely in this world, you know, the more uh, money you have in the... Oh, maybe the entertainment's be like it. Maybe the more money you have in the bank, the more records you sell, the more tours you sell out. Usually it's a good indication of how well people think of you right um or just in general you know she's definitely well regarded people kind of i think patala maybe said it once about about adele kind of breaking up a fight between frank ocean and chris brown on an argument i think maybe that time when frank won an award after they had a fight chris brown and Bush, i think she somehow said something to them right to chill out take it easy so she's got that kind of motherly um auntie vibe that everyone seems to um resonate with her so yeah she's an amazing person we know that but she might have wanted the lifestyle change she might want to just change her appearance based on the breakup i don't know whatever we don't know what's going on but i just thought that was a weird way to go with it right she's better on the inside mm -hmm. so okay cool and then this one was interesting this this went really in it which kind of expounded on the whole like fact acceptance movements and what people in that community think about this so again weird weird way to spin it but let's hear what we see if we can find out where they're coming from here so this person says uh to my fellow fats who are looking at everyone telling adele how beautiful she is now she's skinny uh you're valid beautiful and celebrated your weight you are now which i agree with right like i said in the beginning i think that side of the fact that experience is awesome i think for girls coming up nowadays with a phone in their hand feeling like you know they have to uh abide by these social norms to see people that look like them at that current moment out there thriving living well is great so he continues you don't need an Adele moment to feel validated of course you don't need that but again this validation thing should really come from your parents or your household you shouldn't be going to social media to feel like you are validated as a human it should be the way you're brought up you know you should be instilled of uh and you know an unmeasurable amount of self-love and you know appreciation of who you are as a human and what you can evolve into uh, over a period of time um, how life experiences can shape the way you go to you you attack things in the future you should have that mindset from you know from your home it should be something you're trying to get from strangers online that's when people really mess up a bit i think even if you are wanting to lose weight you should just be doing it for yourself and for the people around you because you want to i don't know she might be like hey i wasn't healthy i had some real big health problems i have a niece i have a nephew um you know whatever it may be right my other brother's got he's just his wife got pregnant my parents are past i don't know whatever there might be something that might just change your perspective on life that's fine um but the adele moment thing is weird that comes like a phrase but it continues here adele moment you can achieve and be whatever you want be right now okay we knew that and it continues also the she looked better than when when she was fat takes are fucking terrible you don't have to comment on a woman's looks mm, you kind of that is it, that is just so what we're going to live in a world where we just don't comment on everyone's looks we just somehow what are able to uh not judge a book by its cover that's not going to happen really you know um, it continues you don't have to be part of the problem they go low we go high you can try that but it doesn't always work but it continues here what we're not going to do here is debate health and weight she says fat people exist some are happy being fat some want to be slimmer some are healthy some are not so the fact remains fat people exist and worthy of love and respect and beauty and are neither better nor worse that i agree that's a brilliant take that i like right that's how that's what it should be reaction wise because i i I, just, I understand why it can be triggered if you're a bigger person to suddenly see these tweets of like you know all these new adele fans liking her now because she's skinny because i think if you don't like someone because of what they look like that's you know that's a whole different conversation that we probably don't even need to have in it we're just not going to be friends but you can't just like write somebody off because they don't look the way you want them to look that's insane but you're also allowed for your own way of viewing the world to say i much prefer that person the way they look now than when they did in the past it's just it just is what it is it's like when people post pictures of themselves ugly in high school and like oh look how much i glowed up now why is that interesting or compelling content because you look considerably better in your eyes and everyone else's eyes than you did when you were in high school you're still the same person you're still beautiful on the inside do all these things but by conventional beauty standards you look better now than you did back then people do it all the time so i just think you know people need to get over themselves a little bit i think if you want the fact acceptance movements to happen you have to be comfortable getting taken the piss out of you have to be comfortable being poked a little bit it just has to be a thing you can't have these 
special rules about the way you are the people that act and then when people do something different you then decide to do another kind of rule marking i don't know it just seems weird isn't it telling people how to react to you but then when someone else does something different than what you would do you then start reacting and creating it's really strange and it continues here it says uh, we're all just trying to live as we are with body autonomy and the ability to exist with each other in harmony and without prejudice a person's size or lack thereof does not make a person better or worse than you look deeper yeah which is true but unfortunately we don't in it that's why apps like tinder exist because the world as we are it, as it is now it kind of calls for people to kind of make snap judgments on the surface because there is little to no time to get to know someone deeper why would you bother if you have services and products and situations where you can just get to know somebody on the surface and keep it going from there it would be nice to get to a place where we would dig a bit deeper inside but it's not and i think the best way to kind of push things forward and the fact acceptance move is just for you just to exist remind people of this tweet here i think in the middle we are not we are not going to do here is debate health and weight five people exist some are happy being fat some may want to simmer some are healthy some are not so the fact remains we exist we are worthy of love respect and beauty and neither better or worse i think that should be the kind of mantra there shouldn't be anything about you know shaming somebody for losing weight or getting annoyed with people that when they say they prefer a skinny because that's just someone's opinion you just have to be able to if you want to be part of you know regular society and not have people look at you weird you just have to accept that some people are just going to react dodgy about things but you also have to be brave enough to step out you know you don't want to live in a world where you know for us how can i can say this for as much good as there is in those kind of res retreats they do right because i remember watching a video of one which was quite touching i think it might have been for that video there's a really good tv series actually called shrill where this lady um where it's essentially follows this uh, bigger lady in hollywood actress who does loads of stuff i think on snl she i'm assuming she's written directed the entire series because it's kind of maybe loosely based on her life and how she grew up but it's a really interesting um tv series because it does give you a kind of insight into what it must be to be a especially in LA or in the kind of the entertainment industry what she must kind of go through being a bigger person but there's a really cool scene where they go to like a pool party and it's like sort of a retreat for plus size women or you know bigger women and it's really touching to see like you know the idea you know the whole kind of premise is that she doesn't want to go she doesn't really see herself as fat and then you go there and you see bigger people who are much more confident in the way they look and they're you know wearing bikinis and swimming and shit sunbathing and things that you, she would probably never do because she um has her own insecurities but she's able to go to this place and suddenly let loose and be herself it's an amazing really touching scene right but there's a part of me that's also like be like oh, man you kind of want to get to a place where you're able to do that in any beach you don't want to create these um utopias where you can only be yourself in these one place and then the rest of your life is what some sort of you know sham some sort of fake front that you're putting up in order to kind of make yourself look like you're okay but deep down you're dying no that's not what life is living about life is not like that like you know we've just got this pandemic we're going through at the moment that stopped everything in our tracks um, nothing is guaranteed right we all had plans that we were going to do places that we were going to go visit people we were going to go see they've been completely paused because of something that's happened in the world that we've had to kind of you know suffer through together that we didn't know that was going to happen right just kind of sprung upon us so to waste time pretending to be okay or pretend or you know not living your truth and not being yourself in the world that exists now and waiting to go to a retreat really does seem like sad and a waste of time for me i'd much rather they kind of accept where they you know just accept the fact that you're going to get teased and people might say some dumb stuff but be comfortable in your own skin because i think that would go a long way in changing the narrative as opposed to bickering about it online and then the last screenshot i'll say about it before we move on is this one what's this tweet it says adele losing weight doesn't mean that she wasn't beautiful at any size and complimenting her appearance now doesn't take away from the facts which i agree her body her choice for how it looks you do you girl happy birthday my sister but definitely uh happy may sister so definitely agree with that one as well i think that's a good way to end it out and you know people are going to have their decisions that people are going to have their opinions about what looks better and what doesn't look better but i think the beauty of it nowadays especially in social media era is that if you're a girl coming up i always think about you know if you're like a 15 year old girl that happens just to be i don't know maybe 13 you happen to be a little much bigger than your peers in your classroom and it doesn't seem to be a thing about you eating because you tend to eat the same as everybody else but your metabolism just means you put on weight quicker you know there could be an issue where back in the day you would have felt you know that you know 
there was something wrong with you but nowadays with these with the fact that everyone on social that's thriving is you know really uh leading into who they are and what they represent and just being themselves in front of camera or, you know a, a real enough an authentic enough version more so than a hollywood star i think it makes that virtue or girl feel a little bit more at ease right you know kind of giving yourself such a hard time because you know other people online who are sort of like your friends because you watch their content every single day you know they're live and thriving being the, being bigger or being the same size as you so what you know there's no limits what you can do i think that's great but to some i get to a point in the world where people don't judge people based on what they look like i don't think that's going to be something that we're going to get to now again are you going to be my friend if you you know pointing fingers at somebody that happens to be bigger and laughing of course you're not going to be my friend but i'm also understanding of people that have that perspective i just don't want them anywhere near me um but yeah allow the girl and it's her birthday and shit what can we do let's move on what do i want to talk about here before da, 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 da. oh yeah the baby needs to chill out this is an interesting story because you know it's the baby and he's always in the press but the baby's had a really interesting career uh trajectory right because usually you know i've kind of knew of the baby mostly due to his kind of antics away from music right the first story that kind of came within the what kind of circulated around him was the fact that he uh defended himself i think in the supermarket or it might have been in like a car park of course it was definitely near walmart somebody tried to rob him and then he basically uh, fired back in a state where you are allowed to have a gun he's got a license for it and defended himself and the dude ended up dying right so that was a story that kind of popped off and that kind of gave him this reputation of being a dude that doesn't take any shit and other things happened that since that incident fights with you know people in clubs fights with other not rappers no somebody else yeah rappers or in that shopping mall that famous one where the dude's pants fall off um some of them made him look tough some of them made him look cool some of them just were just a bit unnecessary but then it got to a point where the frequency of the of these kind of uh, stories seemed to give rise to the suggestion that maybe he's got some sort of anger issues right so maybe there's something wrong with this dude that he's been too conditioned maybe living the street life that he's unable to deal with conflict and deal with yeah deal with conflict and arguments in a civilized manner without having to resort to violence he doesn't know anything else because he's the environment he grew up in the way you deal with problems is neat violence with violence and it is what it is or just issues you just that's how you just deal with stuff that's how you kind of stamp your authority and let people know you're not fucking around but now he happens to somehow then again this is just considering how people love to counsel people and the fact that you know he's having to deal with music executives who kind of get a bit shook and panicky when somebody has you know tattoos and wears colorful trousers and shit so imagine somebody like him right they get a bit nervous but the fact that he's been able to kind of turn such an ugly period of his life i'd say not ugly but maybe an unfortunate period of his life because he might say ugly. he might say look i was within my right to defend myself but he, the fact he's able to turn such a bad situation into a good for himself and his family, his friends, has been quite marvelous to see. He's become the next hip rapper in the moment. Everyone's got, as the, everyone seems to have their little moment, the kind of pop moment. Right? Migos had their moment. Um, Travis Scott had his kind of moment in the pop kind of sunlight. Everyone seems to get like a slight shine on him in that moment. Asap Rocket had his little moment too. They all have their little moments. Kendrick has his moment every time his album drops, and. The baby seems to be the newest guy out, right? He's doing the features with everyone under the sun. He's putting up a big step and album after album. Everything seems to be going well for him, but he seems to still be getting himself in situations where he's having to exert extreme violence or acts of violence in order to kind of uh, get his way in things. And this story from TMZ is another one, which we're not too sure if it's real because he came out and said it's all cap and it's not true. But I'm just wanting to speak on it because there was a really interesting quote from this new book from 50 cent called i think hustle hard or hustle hard or something like that right something about hustling it's, it's a new book that he brought out basically he's kind of life lessons that he's learned over the time you know going from where he went from um from the streets to the kind of boardroom and you know being the highest paid cable executive i didn't know that at the moment with the stuff that he's doing with stars and everything else he's got a really interesting quote in the book about tony ayo one of the founding members of you know g unit who's known as the kind of wild boy of the group right the sort of quote unquote the shooter of the team and I think a lot of what he says about Tony Yeo resonates with this the baby story in general. And it's a kind of uh, cautionary tale about how he needs to kind of fix up and not get into a point where his career gets real, like, you know, his career goes off the rails due to the stuff he's doing outside of it. But this is the article from TMZ. He says the following. The baby allegedly attacked the driver in Las Vegas. So, um, 
da, 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 da. this is a uh, let's do the original the original story the baby can't keep his hands to himself if you believe a driver who claims a rapper the attacked him when an argument quickly turned physical law enforcement sources tell tmz the driver got a call to pick up the baby in vegas back in november of last year right the rapper and some friends uh hopped into his mercedes sprinter van we're told a few stops after a few stops the baby and his friends sparked a joint and the driver told them that that's not a no no which is interesting isn't it because i think that bit is probably true it's a thing that i don't know i remember i think joey diaz maybe have said it once like you know there's no need to be smoky when you're driving in it right if you're gonna go to your destination it's like people that eat in their car whilst they're driving just park up somewhere and have your meal right there's no need to be like doing two things at the same time you can just chill and take it easy especially in the states where the weed laws are a little bit more relaxed than they are and maybe anywhere else in the world there's no need to really kind of push the envelope and i've always been and it's part of me as well that's a bit is similar has the same kind of thinking when it comes to uber drivers and putting on your own music there are occasions where if it's i don't know maybe it's a long trip or maybe you're tired or maybe the guys i don't know there are occasions where it could be necessary to kind of just put it on in the background but there are times as well when you're going somewhere five ten minutes away do you really need do you really need him to put on his ox cable and connect it with you i don't really think it's necessary um i'd much rather just like you know leave the guy alone and you know kind of have some respect for his space because you know in general he's taking you in his car to a destination safely and if i can make conversation i can if i'm not bothered i won't in it like humans are able to do that we're able to make that kind of judgment based on the energy that we have we're in the same space but there's no point in taking liberties right sneaking a drink in that's open and drinking it you know i've always if i had a drink in my hand i'm going to an uber i've always come out to the driver hey do you mind if i just hold that one drink it i'll just put it aside and i don't then go in and then drink it just little things that you don't do in it that i think are really interesting or you know adding stops that you haven't put in the app on there and just being annoying just be a courteous person so i don't really see the need of sparking a joint but i can imagine you know american rapper right at the fucking mount you know right at the tip of the mountain in terms of his influence and his kind of notoriety just feeling like he's on indif- indif- uh what's it, just feeling as if he's uh not indefensible what's that word it's too much weed feeling as if like there's nothing that's going to happen to him right there's no it's just you just feel undefeated it's like many young people in it we just have that reckless abandon but yeah continues it says a uh, cop say the rapper and his friend started cursing out the driver and threatened him when they got to the hard rock hotel the driver told his passengers it was time to pay up the driver claims the baby punched him in the back of the head and said you ain't the boss jesus christ our law enforcement also say one of the suspects said you're lucky you're not in my city because i would have killed you you cracker motherfucker wow we're told the baby and co got their bags but not before someone allegedly said we we would have left the driver dead on the road we're told there's now an active arrest warrant to bring in the baby for this misunder this miss what's that what's that word called misdemeanor battery i wonder why it's something that happened in november is only getting reported now why is that there's the timings of these things always seem to be odd to me don't get me wrong the album came out what a couple of weeks ago but the fact that the allegations are already coming out now given how famous he is is interesting the fact of the detail the fact that it was leaked to tmz beforehand it just seems a bit weird i'm not too sure if i believe everything about this as reported says here follows on um the babies had a spare share okay cool it's just talking about the incident he had with the kid in the hotel room but i thought this quote from 50 cent really explained why a lot of people are worried about the baby and want him to like kind of chill out because this story can end another way like you know the story of tony Ayo where he effectively I think 50 Cent says in this kind of clip I'm going to show you and listen so you can listen to it now from the audiobook but he essentially says Tony Ayo sort of didn't need didn't really grow up along the way he kept trying to you know he kept thinking he could deal with the executives the same way he deal with people on the street by just you know intimidating them with you know threats of physical violence or whatever it may be and um yeah I think this is a really cautionary tale for the baby but let's play it now so you can just gonna hear it should be playing now. I think this book is out now on all, you know, audiobook platforms. Tony Yayo's issues were a little different. Like Banks, Yayo was from my neighborhood. But unlike Banks, he didn't stay on his stoop. He was very much in the street and running into as much action as he could. Yayo was wild from the day I met him. In our world, it was a temperament that served him well. He was liable to do anything at any time, and people gave him a wide berth because of it. At the time, I aided Yayo in being so wild. As a crew, 
we needed that aggressive and unpredictable energy. Even after we first started experiencing success, we were still living that lifestyle. We didn't see any reason to change. That meant we were going to be very aggressive in taking what we felt was ours. If someone disrespected us or got in our way, our response was to get them out of our way, whatever it took. One of my skills is I absorb information and process it faster than most people. So even as we were running wild through America's stadiums, nightclubs, and hotels, I was beginning to pick up signals that we were going to have to change how we approach things. The most obvious sign was that there were police everywhere we went. Stadium concourses, hotel lobbies, out in front of clubs, the cops were always there. You would think there was no other crime happening in whatever city we were in, considering the way they followed us around. Some of the other signs were less observable. There was a lot of nervous energy around us. It's an easy thing to miss when everything's moving so fast. But if you look past people's acquiescence, the fear is evident. I could read it in radio jocks, studio engineers, TV hosts, club managers, booking agents, and program managers. They wanted to do business with us, but not if they thought a gunfight might break out at any second. And I think that was the main bit at the end, right? And I think that goes to show as well why it's hard. Sometimes it can be difficult. I understand if you're looking from the outside in, and your situation isn't where it needs to be, and there's people online sort of like flaunting their success in your face, you know, in your eye, in the way you kind of interpret it. It can be hard to kind of appreciate just how much what goes into making yourself somebody, turning yourself into somebody at Fifty Cent nowadays, right? Especially if you forget you know how he came into the scene and the kind of uh folklore around him and the stories you'd hear about how he moved and what they got up to it can be difficult to really um kind of put into words just how much he has evolved as a person over the you know last few decades but it's also evident that it's no fluke it's no mistake that he was the one in that group that was able to kind of transcend his music transcend his influence in hip-hop even and somehow permeate through culture with the stuff he's done with pop power and other stuff that he's producing at the moment um and it's something that you have to learn on the go and it's something that you have to learn quite quickly because no one's going to tell you because easily in this situation you know when they were going around intimidating everybody and causing a ruckus someone at his record label could have pulled him to one side and said hey you're gonna fuck up the bag you're gonna fuck up the money you guys need to chill out all right but, you know some people someone might have done that but it's more likely than not that the executives at record labels when they see an artist acting wild doing crazy shit and they still got all the attention and the light is on them right because everyone gets this moment in the light um that's bringing them money it's raising you know the, their 10 percent is clock coming in at lightning speed right they're getting more press more press is coming to you people in the industry know what you're doing it's a because i'd assume every executive that is able to find a 50 cent it maybe adds maybe like a decade to your career in it because you can use him as part of your cv he's part of your uh, portfolio he's part of using your deck right so he knows that executive knows every success that 50 cent has as another year like every album is another year or two years to his career so those people are going to be you know it's not in their interest to tell you to calm down but it takes a really wise person to look themselves in the mirror and say you know what i'm fucking up the bag i need to make some changes because the things that he's talking about the intimidation thing is not thing something someone's going to tell you it's something that you need to see yourself and i think the fact that tony a wasn't able to see that and was still going around acting like a goon especially nowadays you know not embracing social media i think this is in the end of this clip is something that i'm seeing a little bit in what's happening with the baby i think he's reaching a point where you know, especially with this amount of light intention he's got in his name, he can't be going around, especially himself. Like, if you're going to, because I'm, I'm sure there's rappers out there that get into scuffles and stuff, but they have people that they can, you know, um, that they can delegate that that sort of, you know, those sort of tasks to. They don't need to be there doing it or whatever. I'm sure these things happen behind closed doors. Pretty sure people have their differences. They run into each other, small circle, small world. If you're, you know, in the one percent of the one percenters. But for him to be, you know, put himself in harm's way in this position isn't the best. And also, there's an ad did you hear a lot from people that practice martial arts or any kind of self-defense. They always say, you know, there's always a bigger, badder person out there. Um, 
even some self defense videos you see online when they talk about how to defend yourself in a street fight, they always number one, so especially in the Gracie breakdown videos, they always say the number one objective is to kind of get your get yourself away from the situation, remove yourself, get your family and your friends away from that situation as fast as possible because you don't know if that person's got a gun, if they've got a knife, or if they just you know, imagine you happen to bump into Francis Nangano before he's made it in the street and he wants to but he wants to fight, he's an aggressive person. What do you do? You don't know who he's a Francis Nangano. You just see this big black dude and he ends up sparking all your friends out you get brain damage and shit you know what i mean like so the adage is that even if you are trained even if you are Mugo Krokov, even if you are damien maya whoever it may be you don't want to put yourself in a position where you might have to use physical force because you know there's no predicting where a fight can go there's a story just recently about a kid you see that video about a kid in america to play fight with his mate and he gets an overhand right i think they play boxing in the street and he falls and bangs his head on the floor has a seizure that you see all the time especially with Warsaw, um Warsaw hip hop uh, videos of fights and stuff you see those seizures that people have when they bang their head on the floor or they just collapse on the floor all the time it's not something that's uncommon he has a seizure and you don't think anything of it you just think yeah he got knocked out in a fight he should be okay and then it transpires a couple of days later that that dude passed away you know these things happen so to put yourself in a position like this where you know imagine you bang you kick the guy in the back of the head and he ends up you know hitting his head on the steering wheel and goes out it's just it's just unnecessary all of it but the update of it is i think his lawyers are denying it right this is update as of today it says uh day baby's attorneys drew fielding told tmz it's a 100 percent false accusation which suspiciously pops up in february regarding an alleged incident in november we can smell another attempted money grab which is, which is fine i guess if the lawyer is that confident that his client hasn't done anything i'm not sure sure what the rules are between you know um what they call them clients and them lawyers do you have to tell them the truth how do you know you're telling the truth i'm not too sure if he's telling the truth and it didn't happen fair enough and i guess that cab driver would have to get shamed named them shamed because you know trying to exploit the situation of somebody is not cool but if it isn't true and he did actually do it he's gonna to need to look himself in the mirror and try to rein it in before somebody reigns it in for him in terms of you know enacting some kind of retribution or just you know the checks start drying up like i think that's why which is makes him look worse actually in the situation if he could look worse but that's probably that's part of the situation what happened with six nine isn't it part of why that went completely sour was because all the shenanigans he did in the streets were ending up you know fucking up the packing up the bag right stuff he's doing in the streets and social media antagonizing people was affecting where he was getting booked people were canceling shows police departments were contacting venues event because they want to take the risk it was affecting his money so he effectively kind of threw all his fellow uh, co-conspires under the bus because he wasn't able to get the amount of returns that he wanted on his shows or whatever maybe or he wasn't able to book them the level of frequency that he wanted and he, he snitched on everybody some people that he even paid which is the scary part of it right he pays somebody to do a hit for him um and then he snitches on that person that he paid it's just like wow and he gets out before that person gets out as well which is even more scary but I don't know man I don't know I, I just really wish he kind of was able to rein it in because I'm a big fan of the dude again his music is a bit formulaic a bit samey but his videos are incredible his personalities you know you could just you just know when someone's a star he's a star from his personality his charisma um the fact that he's from North Carolina as well is just an interesting part of the story too he's not from you know one of these like hot cities for hip-hop melting well Carolina has got steep history in hip-hop but he's not from a glamorous place in America and he really reps where he's from you know and his story is inspiring you know for the fact that how he's turned it around and been able to become one of the biggest stars in the world and again it's like him and Doja Cat are the ones that you look at and you think you wouldn't have guessed they were going to be the big people in terms of streaming or even NBA Young Boy is another one there's these people that happen to pop up and you just you know if you put them in a lineup you would never guess the baby would be the dude who'd have his moment and be featured on you know i don't know a selena gomez remix and that's when you know you've made it you start jumping on all these remixes of big pop stars and stuff and he's having his time to shine and you don't want it to end prematurely for something stupid you know if you want to tap out and do something else in your career fair enough but don't let your kind of idiotic young boy kind of like machismo bravado put in a situation where suddenly now you're having to take your kid out of private school because you haven't the checks are not coming in as frequently as they were in the past um but again if it's a fake story then you know this can all be forgotten but hopefully he's able to kind of you know avoid these instances or at least pay somebody to beat people's heads you know what i mean that's that's all right but doing yourself is a bit long that's why i think anyway
Um, but yeah, that's an hour in it of the show, I think. I don't want to rub it on too long again. There's loads of other bits I've missed out, but I'm going to update probably tomorrow with another show. But thanks again for tuning in to Excellent Single Show, episode number 310. Um, as per usual, if you want more information regarding myself, uh, click my website below. It's excellentzinger.com. Information regarding everything that I do, blogs, DJing, photography, uh, contact bits and pieces, social media accounts, you can find them there. If you want to follow me on Instagram, do that as well. That's instagram.com forward slash Agostino Zinga, all one word. Same thing for Twitter, twitter.com forward slash Agostino Zinga, all one word. But you can find that down below in the description. So definitely click that. Again, if you're watching via YouTube, smash that like, hit subscribe, leave me a comment, let me know what you think of the show. If you listen via the podcast app, of course, five star review, five star review, please. I help to spread the show and share it with your friends and stuff. But until then, I'll see each other. Uh, we'll see each other again tomorrow. Actually, I'll post another video or another podcast for you guys to listen to tomorrow. But until then, take care, be safe. See you guys soon. Peace.